And now let me give you the feel of my channel. For that, we will set out to the Leopold Museum in Vienna, specifically to the wall of the famous people of the turn of the century Vienna. Let us see a couple of them. Stefan Zweig, who inspired this whole channel for me, Erwin Schrödinger, the Nobel Prize winner in physics, Gustav Mahler, Ludwig Boltzmann, Ludwig Wittgenstein, the house he designed is just 10 minutes away from where I live, Franz Kafka, and finally Sigmund Freud, the hero of today's video. Let's start our journey to the Freud's museum. This corner building is where Freud's apartment was located. The address is Berggasse 19. So why is Freud one of the most if not the most influential people of the 20th century. Let's hear what Stefan Zweig had to say about Freud in his excellent essay, Mental Healers, an amazing account of not only Freud's life, but also an in-depth analysis of his theory, scientific research and method. Here we have a man whose creative insight has completely changed the picture we form of our inner life. The change is tantamount to a revolution in psychology and philosophy. Regardless of the desire of his century to maintain a discreet silence, Freud insisted upon the urgent need for self-knowledge and self-avowal, for the disclosure of the repressed and the unconscious. In this way, he began the cure not only of numberless individuals, but also of a whole epoch that was morally sick. Now we start walking from Schottentor, a square on the famous Vienna Ring. On the left you can see the Vienna University and here is Votiv Church. Let's briefly stop at the Vienna University, which is actually the second oldest German university. In its impressive inner arcade, the bust of Freud was installed. In the beginning, Freud's theories were met with a vehement resistance in the Viennese Academia, but later on he became a professor and every Wednesday he conducted his lectures at the Viennese Medical University. Going back to the streets, I am passing the Freud Park, Votiv Church and heading towards the 9th district, the French district, as you can see by the Café Francais in front of you. There are a lot of French shops, restaurants, cafes here and we are now about 10 minutes away from where Freud used to live. Now I'm turning to Berggasse, the street where Freud lived, and we walk down the street in its direction. So now we are in front of the birthplace of psychoanalysis. Freud lived in the apartment right above the gift shop, not on the third and fourth floors with embellishments and small balconies, because at that time lower floors were considered to be more valuable and they were more expensive because there were no elevators. Let's see the plaque of the museum. Think about it. He lived and worked here for 47 years non-stop, from 1891 till 1938, when he was forced, even though he was reluctant to, to escape to London, where he died a year later in September 1939. What impressed me the most in Zweig's essay about Freud was his work routine. It's completely mind-boggling. For 40 years, every day, Freud was conducting around 10 analyses per day, concentrating on each patient's every word, 
their inner life. And after the sessions, he then continued analyzing the sessions, writing books, corresponding with colleagues, actually writing every word by hand, and doing this consistently for almost 50 years, living modestly in one place and only concentrating on his work and other people. Maybe this is how you become one of the most influential people of the century. Let's go inside the building to the Freud Museum, which is located in the rooms of his apartment. Now you can learn some fancy words for floors. For example, now we are going to Hochparterre, which is the upper level of the ground floor. Walking up these stairs makes me feel like all those first patients of psychoanalysis anxiously and with trepidation, waiting for an encounter with themselves. This is the place where Freud's apartment and legendary practice were located. On the right-hand side was the practice, and on the left-hand side was the private apartment. However, regardless of which bell one rang, invariably the other door opened. Have you ever wondered how one felt when meeting with Freud? Let's see what Stefan Zweig had to say about his encounters with Freud in his biographical masterpiece, The World of Yesterday. Over the years, a conversation with Freud had always constituted one of my greatest intellectual satisfactions. Once every word was fully comprehended by this magnificent, unprejudiced person, whom no admission startled, no statement excited. At the moment of entering his room, it was as if the madness of the world outside had been shut off. Whatever was terrible reverted to the abstract. Confusion resolved itself. That which was concerned with our moment of time clicked into its humble place in the great cyclic phases. But let's shift gears a little bit and on a somewhat lighter note, let's go to the gift shop of the museum. Actually, I will not go inside of the museum shop because I'm not sure if I'm allowed to film there. So I will instead film the window of the shop. And you can see there are a lot of creative souvenirs here. My favorite are ducks. There is a saying in English, get your ducks in a row which means get organized to get your affairs in order. Maybe there is a message for us here. Blue socks with Freud ducks, 100% cotton, very comfortable. I don't know what the connection of socks with Freud is, but if you have any ideas, let me know in the comments below. And this is the most creative Maybe you can wash all your dishes until you get rid of it. Or maybe you can wash them until you're blue in the face, all to no avail. Who knows? Don't forget Freud, because the world we live in is shaped by him, whether we agree with him or not. Coasters for drinks with the Persian rug pattern used on his famous couch, which is now actually in London, even though it served him in Vienna for 47 years, and in London it was only for one year. Let me know in your comments below what your favorite souvenir is and what the connection to Freud is, in your opinion. After difficult shopping choices and hard work, we deserve a little break in famous Viennese coffee houses, in particular the ones which Freud frequented. He often went to these places to play chess, read papers and write, which is what I personally also like to do, without chess. The first and most famous coffee house is Landmann Cafe. I will take you to the place and table where Freud 
like to sit actually. This is here in this corner. So if you come to Vienna, make sure to reserve this table and make some selfies. And the second cafe is called Korb. Uh, his favorite table was right here at the entrance. You will make your visit much more interesting if you don't just go to any touristic cafe but to the places with history behind them. So I hope that this was helpful. Please like this video if it was helpful and write your comments below. Also subscribe to my channel to hear stories about Stefan Zweig, Mozart, Mesmer and many other famous people and places in Vienna. I want to leave you with this Freud's less known quote, the voice of intellect is soft and low, but it will not rest until it's heard. Said by the man who asserted that we are mostly driven by impulses and unconscious, it really reinforces his belief in our intellect and rationality. In spite of the wild forces of our impulses, our way out of confusion and suffering lies in our rational mind and intellect, the idea that gives me hope and strength.